Wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. Today we're going to be talking about the dangers of parallel realities. And with me in studio is my lovely, beautiful wife, Christina Peck. Christina, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm actually glad that we're tackling this topic because parallel realities has kind of made it in the news uh, lately. And uh, I did an episode with uh, Derek Gilbert on Uh Sci Friday about it. I think Derek mentioned it in a daily. Um, I've been talking about it, but... There's this weird idea uh, that's merging time travel and the idea of parallel universes or, mm-hmm. or, or higher dimensions and higher things dimensions. like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, uh, but Christina and I figured it'd be a good idea to set aside a couple of episodes to deal with this topic. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with parallel realities in this one. In another one, we'll, do, we'll deal with time travel and all that because they are separate issues. I don't yes. know why they're being merged now in the news. I don't know. But um, They are nothing better to talk about. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it feels that way. But um, for people who this might be their first time, where, where can they find us online? Uh, you can find us on YouTube. We are youtube.com forward slash into the multiverse. Uh, if you go to skywatchtv.com and scroll down, you'll come across a banner that says into the multiverse with our pictures on it. If you click it, it will bring you right here to the YouTube channel that you are in now. Or if you have Roku, check us out on Roku. We are under the Skywatch TV channel. Yes, definitely. And if you're, if you're viewing this on YouTube right now, you can actually just click on the little subscribe button in the corner of your screen, and uh, then you'll have access to all past, present, and future episodes. So I guess we can uh, start off by talking about how parallel universes and the many worlds interpretation are actually totally different things. Yeah, the the many worlds um, idea is the idea that there are different versions of ourselves mm-hmm. doing different things. Like, oh, and when one in this universe I did this, or yeah. in this world I did this, and in that world I'm doing something else, or I may be shorter, taller, fatter, yeah, <laughs> dead, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, ne- never have been born, never have been born, yeah, and that, that's uh, yeah, many worlds is weird because, and, and actually, it's given uh, Christians some problems. Uh, which I can understand because there's theological issues. Yeah. Like, um, how does that affect free will? Or, you know, if, if there's another version of myself out there that didn't accept Christ and he goes to hell, what does that say about me? And, and that's the distinction. And I'm not saying that I necessarily believe in the many worlds interpretation, uh, which, uh, again, just to recap, basically says for every choice or anything that could be even slightly different, even something as small of a change, change as... You know, um, instead of a photon going this way, it goes this way, and that's the yeah. only change. Uh, then there's a whole separate universe for that. Um, there's two problems I have with it. Uh, the first one is it's usually said that if many worlds is true, then there's an infinite number of universes. Yeah. And we've talked about this before. And again, with <laughs> infinity, that's an issue in mathematics and in uh, reality. Yeah. And, and also, if if what causes another... Uh, if what causes the existence of another universe is a change, well, there's a finite number of changes. You know, there's a finite number. It's not infinite. Now, there's a lot of changes. There's mm-hmm. a lot of ways that every particle in the universe could move. Right. But it's still not infinite. I mean, even if one particle just moves one plank length over to the left, and that change causes uh, a new universe, and that's the only change, and then you have to multiply that based on every particle in the universe. Yeah. Still, you have a finite measurement of the plank length. You know, you have a limit to smallness, which mm-hmm. means you can't have in between a plank length. You know, so there, there's there's a finiteness. Yeah. to reality. You can't have mm-hmm. uh, infinity. You can't have an infinite number of universes. That's right. my first problem. So now what about a version of 
uh, multiple worlds where there's a finite number of universes. Like maybe there is uh, a universe based on everybody's choice or everything that could possibly happen or any, no however many combinations of every particle in the universe that could exist. Again, it would still have to be finite. It would be a very large number. But the issue there also is you would have as many of those as there are Planck times in which is 10 to the minus 30 or 43 seconds. Yeah. Um, so a, ten, a, a one with 43 zeros, that's how many Planck times is in one second. Uh, however many seconds there are in the universe times that, that's, that's at least how many you would have to be going in the other direction. Because when we're talking about time, we have one temporal direction. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the past to the present to the future. So you have one dimension of time. If we're talking about parallel uh, universes next to each other, you have a second dimension of, if you call it time. Uh, so you would have to have at least that many. Yeah. Now, the question comes up, um, what about other versions of ourselves? Well, here, here's the thing. For, in, in my belief, just because there might exist parallel universes uh, in, in other interpretations, that's not many worlds, that doesn't mean they have to be inhabited. But even if they are, even if there are other universes with versions of ourselves that are doing different things, mm -hmm. um, they would have no real connection to us. It's, it's only physicality. It's yeah. only biology, really. Um, it, it's, it would be like having a twin, but almost like having a quantum twin, mm -hmm. you know, where twins, their genes are the same, you know, yeah. you have similar genes and, and, uh, the, the DNA and all that, the, the biology is, is similar. Similar. Uh, you, you would have that, but on the quantum scale. So even the atoms and the quarks and everything would, would be similar, but still that's just physicality. Yeah. We're not talking about spirit, soul consciousness, morality, you know, we're not talking about any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so, I mean, what do you think? Do you, do you think that um, Christians should be threatened by the idea of, of maybe there are other versions out there? How, how, how do you think the church should handle an idea like that? For me, I see since as a Christian, it doesn't say anything about other me's out there right <laughs> <laughs> or any anybody else's out there i mean why would did christ come and die for those universes too exactly and that's a really good point you that, know, that, so, yeah uh, that that's my problem with it yeah and that's a lot of christians problem and, and honestly that's my issue with it too is how do you recon reconcile salvation at that point mm -hmm. um because we know that christ died on the cross for our sins yeah there's, we, we serve one God, yep. you know, and it's not a parallel version of, you know, many gods or anything. It's, it, we serve one God. So if many worlds is correct, because there is only one Jesus, there's not parallel yeah. Jesus, 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 I, Jesus, -ies. <laughs> there's not, there's not multiple. Jesus is. Yeah. There's <laughs> I not, believe that would be the correct term. There's not multiple versions. So <laughs> would he, he would have had to go to all these realities and do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, I, I just don't see that anywhere in scripture. No, I so know. I, I, I don't, I don't think that you can support it with scripture and it's exactly for that reason. Now, of course, because we're, we don't know everything. No, you know, no, no. There no. could be some version of reality where there is actually uh, multiple worlds and maybe even multiple versions of ourselves. I don't believe so, but I might die and go to heaven, and God might say, "Well, actually, you know, there there are other multiple versions of you." Uh, who knows? Right. Probably not, but we we I at least doubt that. But you I, know, I doubt whatever. it. Too. I doubt it too. <laughs> but we at least allow for the possibility right. because we don't know everything. Right. But even in that sense. It, it, what I'm trying to get at here is that it doesn't disprove God. If if there are multiple versions of ourselves, that doesn't mean that God doesn't exist or can't right, exist. Right. Uh, all it means is that God's creation is a lot more uh, expansive and 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 big. <laughs> well, I mean that's true, and I believe that He's created a lot of things for His glory. Just yeah. to say, it just well, He can. Yeah, exactly. For one thing, I mean, I, I'm, I'm growing up, I love cosmology. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the cosmos. I, I've I've I had a telescope. I still have that telescope. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good telescope. I 
remember looking through them at the planets, at the moon. Um, there was actually one time I was able to look. It was like on a cloudy day, I remember, um, and there was a way you could actually focus it on the sun. There's a special lens. Mm -hmm. You could see the sun, and there was a, you could see the solar flares coming off of it. You oh, could cool. see the sunspots. And, yeah, there, there's, that was um, one of, that was, that was a, actually a Christmas gift. Oh, cool. It was a pretty expensive Christmas gift. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I, I don't know if I still have that lens. Anyway, getting off topic, but there, <laughs> but just as, just to show that he he's created things for his glory. He, mm -hmm. it, the, these things are out there. I mean, I've seen Jupiter, I've seen Mars, I've mm -hmm. seen things through this through these telescopes, and it's it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And uh, even if it's not many worlds, which again, I, I think that that is extremely unlikely. I, I don't I don't buy into the many worlds interpretation for a lot of reasons, but mm -hmm. mostly the one that you brought up about Jesus. Uh, but there are uh, there are versions of what we would consider parallel universes that I absolutely do believe in uh, because we believe in heaven. We mm -hmm. believe in what we call on this show, extra dimensional uh, reality. And we're going to get into what we're talking about with all this. If you're confused up to this point, don't worry, stick with us. Uh, we're we're going to lay it all out uh, right after this. You can save the life of a child, a child in desperate need of a family. Children in foster care are at high risk for drug and alcohol abuse, early pregnancy, violence, and jail time. And they're often in foster care because their birth parents just weren't up to the job. That's where Royal Family Kids steps in, showing these kids love, compassion, and the model of what a loving family looks like. And most important, by being family, we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. At Skywatch TV and Whispering Ponies Ranch, we're proud to partner with Royal Family Kids, and you can help through your financial gift. For your donation of $25 or more, we'll send you two books, From Despair to an Heir by Wayne Tesh, the founder of Royal Family Kids, plus A Legacy of Hope, compiled from 25 years of stories from Royal Family Kids camps. And we'll include the DVD of the film camp, featuring stories, true stories, from real life campers at Royal Family Kids camps. To donate, call 844-750-4985. That's 844-750-4985. Or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. Welcome back to Into the Multiverse. If you haven't had a chance to do so, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, you can click the subscribe button in the lower corner, uh, and then you'll have access to all past, present, and future episodes. It's very important you subscribe. Uh, it helps you out. It helps us out. And we just love having people into the multiverse with us. Uh, okay, so we were talking about how there might be a version of uh, parallel realities or parallel universes that could exist. And basically, this is kind of how this would work. Uh, because I, before the break, I alluded to uh, heaven and extra dimensional constructs and things like that. So imagine, best example in the world for anything uh, extra dimensional, imagine uh, Flatland. And we've talked about this so much on yeah. this show, but just a brief recap in case <laughs> it's somebody's first time. Uh, because we do get comments, and sometimes if I mention Flatland and don't explain it, people wonder what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, so, I've, I've seen the comments. They're like, yeah. what's flat? Land. Yeah. What? <laughs> and, and also, thank you for commenting, and because that that does help us to let us know what what people want to hear and mm -hmm. how we can improve. So that does help. But uh, basically, so if you're if you're brand new to the program or if you haven't heard the Flatland analogy before, um, we do get in full detail in, in in previous episodes, so you can look back on those. But basically, what it is, it's a thought exercise. Imagine there is a two dimensional universe. Mm -hmm. uh, it only has side to side, front to back, um, no up or down. So completely just two-dimensional, flat. Now imagine that there are um, beings that exist in this universe. And the universe doesn't have to be very big. It could be the size of your tabletop. Imagine that there are beings who also are flat, two-dimensional. Uh, they have no concept of up or down, and we call them flatlanders. Now, classic example of how uh, a higher dimensional entity would interact with a lower dimensional reality. I... I would be considered an extra dimensional being yes. to a flatlander. Yep. So if I were to <clears> stick <throat> my fingers into flatland and move them around, <laughs> a flatlander would see two circles moving independently of one another yeah. and would probably assume that they're two different things, even though they look similar. Um, same for us. If if a four dimensional, uh, and we're not. This is just talking about dimensions just of space. We're not talking about time. But if a fourth dimensional uh, being were to breach our space, yeah, 
we would see spheres or, you know, whatever the actual shape is translated down one dimension. So if it was a hypercube, you know, we would see a cube. A cube. Imagine flatland as like a sheet of paper. And if you stack enough flatlands on top of each other, eventually you get to a pretty sizable three-dimensional mm -hmm. construct. So you stack up enough two-dimensional things and you get a three-dimensional thing. And that might confuse people because how can how can something two-dimensional have a thickness? Well, actually, in physics, two-dimensional objects are actually allowed a thickness, and it's called the Planck length, mm -hmm. which we have talked about before, but it's the smallest amount of distance possible. So you could actually have a two-dimensional plane with a thickness of the Planck length. And this is so thin, it's even thinner than the smallest particle known to man right now. Um, so it, it's incredibly thin, but you could, you could have a type of, of thickness, mm -hmm. um, which actually brings out an interesting question. Do we have an extra dimensional type of thickness to us that we're just not aware of? We'll get into that later. But, yeah. <laughs> but you stack enough of these up and they start to build up. You know, you have one Planck length thick universe, you put another one on it, now you have two Planck links, you know, double the size, and you keep going. Eventually you have a 3D object. Now mm -hmm. Flatlanders living in a universe that's maybe in the middle, they're not going to notice that there's any other reality beyond what they can see, because they can only see straight forward, they can't see up or down. So, uh, but me as an extra dimensional being, I can see up and down, and I can see that all these universes are stacked. It's basically the same idea. Uh, what creates three-dimensional reality is really nothing more than a lot of stacks of two-dimensional reality. Well, actually, actually, it's nothing more than one-dimensional or just points. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Every, every dimension is made up of all lower dimensions below it. So I believe that we are just one dimension, we're, we're one universe, excuse me, uh, we're one universe among many that stacked up to create heaven and heavenly constructs and everything in heaven and all that, however many dimensions that is. So I think that there is a lot more to reality than what we can see. I, I agree. And um, your, uh, your analogy with the flatland and everything, you know, they, they'll see it, two spheres or no, they don't see spheres. They'll see two circles moving independently, but it's all part of a bigger thing. And the same thing with the four dimensional being coming into our reality, our dimension, we don't know if it's, you know, we might see it as two different spheres working independently, mm -hmm. but it might be part of something bigger. Yeah. Now, isn't it interesting that that phenomenon is actually uh, brought up a lot in UFO reports? Yeah, that's exactly right. Because, I mean, uh, you'll see one doing like doing flips this way mm -hmm. or, or you'll see uh, one going the other way. Or they'll, they'll come into a formation of a V and then or they'll go and then they'll go into one and yeah. then they'll spread out. And yeah. Or change so, shape or shrink and disappear yeah. and do all these things that should be physically impossible. But things that seem physically impossible is just impossible in our three dimensions. Yeah. If you add dimensions, things actually become more possible. <laughs> and I know I've said this uh, before, too, speaking of these higher dimensions and everything. Like I, I remember having uh, discussions with you. We were, we were talk about like you know if we could perceive yeah. as a higher dimensional being, yeah, uh, looking into a box, mm -hmm. a closed box of cans of pop. Yeah, we would be able to see those cans. We would also be able to see inside of those cans. Yep. We would be able to see the fluid. We'd be able to see all areas of that closed box. Yeah. In a hole. Yeah. And well, it would make perfect sense to us. We would be able to process it. Well, imagine a, a flatlander looks at a, a square and mm -hmm. the square has little circles in it. You know, when, when the flatlander's looking at the square straight on, he can't see the circles because there's a wall there, you know, yeah. a, a, one of the lines that make up the square. So he can't see in it. So a flatlander might imagine what if an extra dimensional being were to see this, he, the extra dimensional being would be able to see all sides of the square at once plus inside and what's inside the square all at the same time. And he mm -hmm. could process it. That's crazy. But to us, that's not that hard. We look at it. We could see the whole square. We could see the circles in the square Yeah, and we can process it just fine. So you bump that up just one dimension and there could be as many as 11 or 12 dimensions, but Bump it up just one. A fourth dimensional being would be able to look inside of a closed box mm -hmm. and outside of it at the same time, see all sides of the box um, at the same time, see what's in the box. And if, if the containers in the box were empty, like if there were empty cans, he could see 
inside all those cans yes. too and all sides of everything and be able to process it just fine uh, yeah. and it would be like the easiest thing in the world i know and it's something it's <laughs> something crazy to think about i remember you and i were talking about like well, yeah why? just mind-boggling to us right yeah. now and, and if it's true that when the angels fell when when during this angelic rebellion that we read about in scripture when the angels fell if they did fall to the fourth dimension which which i think is possible that's how they see things that's so weird but Imagine this, that would be limited compared to what they had in heaven because they would have had even more dimensions, yeah. like probably up to 11 or 12, which we've talked about before too, that they would have even even more. So even be able, being able to see things like that, like I could look at this coffee cup and I can only see this side of it, but you know, an extra dimensional being, one like a fallen angel, if it is four dimensional, would be able to see all sides at once plus inside and and process it just fine but that would seem incredibly limited just like if we were only able to see in two dimensions all of a sudden mm -hmm. how limiting and maddening that would be <laughs> i want to bring something up yes. too about higher dimensions okay you know it, when um in ezekiel he saw mm -hmm. somebody measuring the temple yes and his vision i want it, speaking of perceiving things in higher dimensions and you know, in, in in how God works and the spirit of God and, and, and he's given dreams and visions and things like that. Mm -hmm. He can see the end of time, the beginning of time, all as one. Yeah. You know, and, and his you know, well he's God. Yeah. But <laughs> in those higher dimensions, he he can see all of it. And I yeah. wonder if that's how it is. And be, by giving those visions to his prophets, I wonder if it's kind of the same way, given a little bit of that perception of those higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel saw somebody measuring the temple. In Revelation, John was measuring the temple. Yeah, isn't that amazing? So do you think that, that he was given a perception of the higher dimension? Is, is that how dreams and visions work? Yeah, maybe. Do you, you know, because I mean, I've heard people saying uh, that they're in prayer, in accessory prayer, mm -hmm. and they see a vision of somebody across the ocean. Yeah. You know, what if that is just a a little bit of that perception given to us. And that's how we're able to we're see able things to see past things. these barriers yes. that normally exist. I totally believe that, it. It's something yeah. that's interesting to think about. I totally believe it. When you read, like when, when we read uh, some, I mean, we did, we, we already did a whole episode on um, Ezekiel's vision and yes. how extra dimensional that whole thing was. Uh, yet he still, he saw it as it would be translated to a three dimensional being from yes. a higher dimension. Yep. And I've, you know, I've said this before in interviews and on shows and stuff. There's no way somebody's going to convince me that 2,600 years ago, some, some guy in ancient Israel knew enough about quantum physics right, to yeah. make it up and lie <laughs> and just say that he saw that it's, it's explained as if a quantum physicist today would explain it. Yeah. it I mean, he, and he, there's even more details. The book of Ezekiel is amazing. I mean, there are details that talk about the, are still future. Future, mm -hmm. um, talk, talk about like uh, radiation and how they deal with radiation, like how we deal with radiation poisoning today. Yeah. That's described 2,600 years ago when they didn't even know what any well, of that was. When they could touch the Ark of the Covenant, right? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's insane to think about, but um, I ab I absolutely love this stuff. Um, you, you know, and it's interesting too. We talk about these these fallen beings that they might be extra dimensional. I, I've been noticing, and you know, I try to keep up on UFO reports and things like that. Oh, I, yes, it's, yeah. It's interesting to me. I like writing about it, and I think that there's something there. Um, but in the Podesta emails, <laughs> oh. and this is this is something yes. that me and Tom have talked about in different interviews and things, and we're actually uh, compiling a bunch of research for a future future thing that I don't want to get too much into yet, though. Just it's you, you'll want to stay tuned, but <laughs> but. Um, uh, in, in the WikiLeaks Podesta emails, he was in contact with Edgar Mitchell, who was uh, an astronaut, Apollo 14, he was, or yeah, 14. He was the sixth man on the moon. Um, but they, they talked back and forth about what they described as uh, basically what we would think of as uh, extra dimensional beings. They, they, call, they called them extraterrestrial intelligences or ETIs, yeah. but they said in the emails that they were from a... Con a, a, a contiguous or congruent, I forget the exact word that they use, universe, but basically meaning that the beings that they want the government to uh, disclose the rest of us, you know, disclose to the rest of us, that they're not from another planet, that they're from a, another parallel higher reality. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you and I were discussing that and it, I think it, I think it was congruent was the word you were thinking. Yeah. 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 Um, because I remember when I heard you say that, I was like, but that, 
I mean, it's another dimension. Yeah. They were, we were we were discussing this. Like, well, yeah, definitely. Because the way, kind of in the emails, extraterrestrial, but yeah. then they were they, saying they in say, higher reality, then yeah. obviously that's, that's dimensional. Yeah, they say extraterrestrial intelligences in the emails, but through all those emails, and there's a lot of them, but through all of them, they're never talking about aliens on another planet. No. They're talking about beings from higher dimensions. dimensions. And it's, it's crazy to think about because back when abductions were first started, you know, getting mainstream, like back in the 50s or 60s, when an abductee would ask the, the alien, you know, where do you come from? They would say things like the moon or Mercury or Venus or Mars, really close. But it was relatable to the abductee, so they believed it. Well, then we developed technology to be able to see those places. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially Mars and Venus. There is no way you're building a spaceship on Mercury. Uh, I mean, yeah. well, Mars maybe, but Venus or Mercury, I, it would no. melt before you could even... I know. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't yeah. be able to do anything. Yeah, it's, it's insane. But um, So then it was like the aliens or whatever changed their story a little yeah. bit and they started telling people no we're, we're actually from zeta, Retic zeta reticuli or arcturus or uh the pleiades or you, you know these far off places and up until about five or ten years ago that was like the mainstream thing that the, that's where these beings are from uh but then just a few years ago we started developing technology where we can actually uh, examine the properties of exoplanets, you know, yes. planets way out from our solar system. Um, well, all of a sudden they're changing their story again. Now they're starting to tell people that they're actually <laughs> from a higher dimension. Mm -hmm. You know, how are we ever going to uh, vet that story? Well, uh, and then CERN's like, CERN's like, hey, maybe we can open up these portals and talk to higher dimensional yes. beings. Yeah, and it was right around that same yeah. time when aliens started telling abductees that. All of a sudden, CERN wants to open doorways to this reality. And the the, the whole thing is, is, is uh, it's just insane that we live in this kind of world. I know. I <laughs> know. I don't understand the craziness behind it. I don't either. Well, uh, th this has been a fun conversation, but we are all out of time. If people want to uh, find more about Into the Multiverse, where can they go? All right. Go to youtube.com forward slash Into the Multiverse. Don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't. Or, and um, if you go to our Skywatch TV homepage, you can scroll down. And then on the right-hand side, there'll be a picture of us. Click on it, and it will bring you right here to our YouTube channel. Or you can check us out on Roku under the Skywatch TV channel. Definitely. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, uh, anything, uh, show ideas even, if there's a topic that you would like us to cover on the show, you can email me at jpeck at skywatchtv.com. I'll be happy to read your email. And if I'm able to, I will respond. Uh, we do read every email we get, but we're not able to respond to all of them because there's a lot. So we do the best that we can, though. But um, we have taken sh show suggestions before. So if you have one, feel free to send it over if you have a question. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter also. Well, thank you so much for joining us into the multiverse yet again. Until next time, take care and God bless.